I want some clarification over some things um, because we are a body that operates in the gifts of the Spirit. And I, I teach it in certain classes that I do, but I just feel like it needs to kind of be taught. And that way, those of you who are mostly here uh, on Wednesday nights are mostly the ones that are in leadership. So this way, if you have a good understanding of it, you can explain it to others and the, uh, the new ones that are coming in. Amen? All right, so let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you for tonight. I thank you for your anointing upon your word, God, that, it, uh, that that anointing is great. And it divides the soul from the spirit, the bone from the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of our heart. And Lord God, that that word comes with uh, power to cut those things off of us that uh, need to be cut off of us, God. We just surrender to that now, Lord, in Jesus' name. I thank you right now for your anointing upon me to bring it with simplicity and with clarity so that all that hear it may understand it. And I thank you for that. I thank you that um, your anointing destroys yokes of bondage tonight. I thank you for a fresh and new revelation tonight. For the gift of tongues. I thank you, Lord, as, as you teach it, Holy Spirit, to each one of us. As I bring the word, you're the teacher. And I thank you for that tonight. We ask you to come in, flood in here, and have your way, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we give you praise and glory for it. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Well, hopefully you might... Um, some of you who have heard me teach on this know it. Some of you uh, may learn some things tonight, but um, just bear with me. It's going to be exciting, and I will pray for anybody who does not have their prayer language after tonight. But there's more that uh, tongues have to deal with than just your prayer language, just your personal prayer language. Um, there's much more. Um, and so I just I want to quickly go over and teach a few things and then go to, and go to some scripture to show you some things that I believe. This is why the, why the enemy fights this gift so hard is because it opens up mysteries. Okay? It opens up not only the mysteries of God, but the mysteries. Do you know how last week I talked about your spirit, soul, and, and, and becoming one? Do you remember how I talked about that? And that, that, that in Psalms 139, it talks about that the mysteries of, that uh, our, the DNA of God is written on us. He formed us in our mother's womb. He framed us together is what the Amplified said. He saw our frame. And you know, in Hebrews, it says that God framed the world with his word. And so as he framed us in our mother's womb, he, there were certain things that he wrote on our spirit, our spirit man. This is why we have to become one here because our spirit man has to dictate to our souls. That's why in John it says, in patience possess you your souls. We're to possess our souls. Our spirit searches. Remember what I preached last, last Wednesday night. That our spirit searches what's there. Our spirit man is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 is what I preached on. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard last, last Wednesday night. And that uh, the Spirit of God searches, yea, the deep things of God. And, and, but our spirit man is what knows us. And so it searches those things. And so you have to, it went, th this gift is so important because your spirit man will begin to reveal mysteries, come on, to you. That's one of the things that, that the gift of tongues does, your prayer language does, is it begins to, the mysteries. It says in Psalm 139 that the Lord knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb and that he, he saw your frame and that all the days of your life was written in a book. Y'all have heard me preach this many, many times. Okay? So if he has the instruction written on your spirit, man, come on. What releases it? That's it. Your spirit man. See, this is why the enemy fights tongues so much. It's because the more you pray in tongues, the more of those mysteries are released. And, the, and then the mysteries of God are made known unto you because those two things come into alignment. Amen? And so I just want to uh, explain just a little bit of that to you so that you know that it's an integral part in getting some revelation from heaven. It releases you into a whole other realm. It, it causes greater understanding because it says the mind, know, the mind know, uh, thinks, but the spirit knows. 
And so it's not about understanding it always here, but it's about knowing it here. And that can only be known by the Spirit. And the only way to get your spirit man bigger than this is one of those ways is edifying yourself by praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues. And so there are um, nine gifts of the Spirit found in, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says, now concerning, therefore, con- now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same Spirit. There are diversities or differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So everybody say, every man. Every. That means every man. <laughs> you can't trace that back in the Greek to mean something else. It means every man. And when it says man, that means mankind. That means woman too. Okay? So don't leave yourself out. So God wants the manifestation of the Spirit. It's given to you. It's given to me, to every man. Not just a few that teach and preach. It every man. Say it again, every man. Amen. All right. And we see in those, that portion of Scripture that um, operations, God is in charge of the operation of those things. Jesus is in charge of the administration of those things. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is in charge of the manifestation of those things. Do you see what I'm saying? Okay. And Romans 11, 29 says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Once you ask for a gift and God gives it to you, He don't take it back. But you are held accountable for what you've been given. Because there's another scripture in Romans that says that we're supposed to be stewards of the mysteries of God. It may not be in Romans. It may be in another place. I don't always remember exactly where the things are. But we are to be stewards over what he's given us. Do you know that he's even sent, when it says in Ephesians that that Jesus led captivity captive and then he gave gifts to men? Did you know that the gifts are already there? That's part of the instruction that's on the inside of you and you will still be held accountable for what you don't do? Now come on there. Thank you. 1 Corinthians 4. Yeah. I mean, you have a choice. God's not going to send you to hell because you don't fulfill everything that you were supposed to. But, you know, I I just want to give you a desire and a want to. Don't you want to dig and know the mysteries of God? Don't you want to know what He's placed on the inside of you? What He sent you to this earth to do? There's a purpose for your life. You're just not here floating around. And we're not just going to be in heaven floating around either. Just so you know, I believe heaven's a planet just like earth is. Come on. Life is going to continue forever. And ever and ever. It's called infinity. Forever. God is time. He is the beginning and the end. And He has an end purpose for you. Even for this time. See, this is just a time of your life while we're on earth. I'll get real deep here in a minute. This is not where I tended on going, but... There is, there, this is just a season of your life while you're here on earth. What you don't accomplish, what you were made to do, you will learn it there. It's a continuation. Come on. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of this flesh. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. Let me not go on that squirrel, on that rabbit trail. Okay, so... If you see the, um, let's see, let's go on down in, in chapter 12. Hallelujah. Okay. To every man to profit with all. Let's read in verse 8. He 
keep reading. It says to profit. Remember it said, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For if for one man is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healings by the, by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To the other, diverse kinds of tongues. And to another, interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh all one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man, say every man, severally as he wills. Now I want to tell you, this doesn't mean that you cannot operate in all nine of those gifts. Because you can. Paul did it. I got scripture to back that up. It just means that God's not going to give you all in a corporate setting because he wants the whole body to work together. So he may give you tongues at this moment and interpretation to you at this moment or gifts of healing to you at this moment and prophecy to you at this moment because he's not going to give it to one person because he's not about it being about one person. Because we're a body that works together. Amen? That's what that means. But you know what? I, I've told the Lord a long time ago, I want every bit of it. Because I, well, whoever I'm standing in front of, if I'm in the grocery store, if I'm at the hospital, if I'm at school, wherever I'm at, at work, wherever, whoever is standing in front of me, I want the gift that they need right then. Yes. Right then. And it's not about me. It's about him, what he can do in that person. I don't ever want to be in a place where God cannot use me. And where I, got, where I came to this was I, I prayed for a man one night. He was a great uh, missionary that I knew. And we went to, to pray for him. My intercessory, this church was started from an intercessory group out of my home. Okay? Years ago, 14, 15 years ago. And it, it grew from there. And uh, the intercessory group that I had, we went to pray for this man. Because we had started the church and he had come to minister. Um, several times at our church, and uh, he had been to other countries, and I had great respect for the man, and he had had a stroke. He had lost his wife on the mission field years before. He had had a stroke. He was in uh, the nursing home over in, um, I believe it was Nacogdoches, and we went to pray for him, um, my intercessory group, and that night he passed. But when I got to that, and I was devastated, but I was young in the Lord, and the Lord had to show me we were sent to usher him in, and it was okay. <laughs> That's why we were sent it, to do it. But um, that night when I saw him, because he was a strong and he was a big man, and he had had that stroke, and he was so, it was sad to me that night. And I went into the bathroom, and I hit my knees on that bathroom floor, and I said, God, make me a vessel. <laughs> to where no matter where I'm at and what circumstances I'm in, I can lay hands on anybody and they'll come up. I don't ever want to not be ready for you to use me. And so uh, from then on, I, I think that that marked my life. And, and I mean that. I truly mean that. You know, that doesn't mean you're not fixing to go on a process. You know, so many times we say, yes, Lord, send me, do this, do that. But listen, you're, that, that, that has to do with your will. And then all of a sudden, you're speaking it out of your mouth because you know that's what you want. But your will says something totally different. You'll start going in this direction and then it wants to suck you back, you know, or your emotions or, you know. And so that's why what I want to talk about tonight is the gift of tongues is so important. It is so important. Um, and it's not something that's supposed to be spooky. It's not something that is, you know, you may have been taught that it was, um, uh, that that died away, that those things died away with the apostles. And you're just too late to tell me that because I already operate in them. And you can't, you know, you can't, what somebody's, see, you can have knowledge of something, but it's the experience of something that no one can take away from you. Because once you've experienced the power of God, once you've seen the supernatural power of God working and, have, and, and has worked, see, no one, no one can refute that in you. Amen. There is no argument that can come in and steal that from you. If you've laid hands on somebody's blind eyes and they've seen, guess what? You're expecting it every time you do it after that because it was an experience. And so if you have that experience, no one can take it from you. And let me just ask you this. How do you know you're saved? Experience. You felt the Lord. You know it, right? There's no one that can take that away from you. It's the same thing. 
with the gift of tongues, the gift of healing, all of those things. Once you've experienced it, you can't, it's, it's irrefutable. It's just, it can't be argued. There's no argument against it. And so um, um, I want you, what I do is I take these gifts, these, these nine gifts, and I break them up into three groups. Um, and y'all have seen me teach this before. Um, but there's three groups. It's the revelation gifts, the power gifts, and the vocal gifts. And if you take it across your page, you put revelation gifts here, power gifts, and then vocal gifts. And so under uh, under revelation gifts are the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and discerning of spirits. Under the power gifts, there's faith, gifts of healing, and working of miracles. Under vocal gifts, there's different kinds of tongues, interpretations of tongues, and prophecy. And so we're just going to deal tonight with, um, I just want to talk about tongues tonight. Okay, because I want I want it understood, and I want um, I want you to be able to explain it to someone if they ask you. Well, you go down to that church where they all pray in tongues, or they all speak in tongues, or you know, I mean, I've I've heard people say that. My children have been in a in a in a um, line at a store and heard somebody talking about our church. Talking about me personally, you know, and they didn't know that that was my daughter. And so, you know, I know what people say. I know what they think. But let me tell you something. They said the same thing about Jesus. And good company. That's right. So, you know, it's okay. That doesn't, you know, but you, you still, you know, our families have to sometimes um, endure uh, because of the call, you know. Uh, And sometimes your family, just by coming here, they're not going to always agree with you either. But the Lord said, (laughs) the Lord says, if you're willing to leave father, father, mother, brother, sister, houses, homes, mammon, whatever, if you're willing to do that, he'll give you something much greater. It'll be restored back to you. I'm a living testimony of that. There were many times when I wanted to give in to what my kids wanted. You know, when they were back out in the world doing things that they, they shouldn't be doing. And, I, and the Lord told me, no, you can't do that, Dana, because if you go back now, then you, it will negate everything you've ever told them about me. You have to be the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, just like me. That's my character, and I need you to show them my character. Because when we enable our children, now I don't know who this is for, but this is prophetic because this is nothing, this is for somebody. When you continue to enable your child and children in what they're doing, it just prolongs the work of God in their life. Go on, take your hands off. Be stern. It's called tough love, and it's not easy. Sometimes you gotta go back, turn your face, and put it to the wall, and you gotta cry. And you gotta intercede for them and stand in the gap for them. But I promise you, if you remove yourself, God will bring them back much quicker. As long as you keep enabling them and keep feeding them and keep putting putting your hand to them, God can't put his hand to them. And sometimes that's fear in us because we're afraid of what God's going to do. Come on. You're touching God's glory when you do that. Because he's going to get the glory out of them. And so when you have got your hand on them, you're touching God's glory. You've got to let them go. You've got to give them to him. You've got to put them on the altar. It's not easy to do, but you can do it. That's another thing that tongues does for you. It, it strengthens you, so you can. Okay. So I'm just going to talk about the, the diverse kinds of tongues, because did, you not, did we not read that it was diverse kinds of tongues or diversities of tongues. There's more than one kind of tongue. And so I want to touch on that tonight so that you will know what the difference is. Because uh, a lot of people come in and they'll say, well, we believe in tongues, it's in the Bible, but we don't believe you should do it all together in one, in one corporate setting and there's different orders of it and all that. Well, I hope tonight that when you leave here, you're going to understand it in a greater way than you've ever understood it before. That's my, that's my, that's my prayer tonight. And so I want to explain it to you. So there's three kinds of tongues that the Bible talks about. 
And tongues are the ability given by the Holy Spirit to speak in a language not understood by the speaker. You don't understand it when you speak in tongues. And that's the first thing that people always say, well, I don't understand it. You're not supposed to. Yeah? When that's happened to you? You know, I mean, most everybody says that to me. Um, there, and and you, you don't. You don't know. It's not for you to know because it's a heavenly language. Okay? It's your spirit language. Code talkers, wind talkers, whatever you want. We just had the national, uh, uh, Tuesday was the national day for uh, the Navajos, um, code talkers that, that formed the language to, um, to help win Hiroshima. Um, is that how you say it? Okay. Um, but so it, it's just, that's, we were talking about the, the code talkers. And I do believe that it's, it's, it's the spirit language. That is our code. As, as Christians, as believers, see, that is a great weapon. It's strategy. And the enemy cannot hear it. See, because in that, in that, in the code talkers, what happened? Let me just go on and tell you that. In the code talkers, what happened was that they formed, it was the Navajos that got together and they formed a code language. It was out of the Navajo language, but it wasn't like their fluent regular language. It was words that they used as codes so that the enemy, it was the first time that the enemy had not intercepted, come on, their plans and strategies when they went to war. Come on. That's right. They could not break the code. That's what happens to you when you pray in the Spirit, when you pray in tongues. It is a code that the enemy cannot understand, and you can't either. It bypasses your pee piddly, my pee piddly carnal mind. That's it. My humanity. It bypasses it. Thank you, Jesus. See, he didn't leave us without a comforter. That he sent the Holy Ghost because he wanted us to be comforted. He wanted us to have warfare strategy. He wanted us to know how to be led by the Spirit. In John, when he says, Lord, I wish that the, I pray that they be one as you and I are one. That's what he's talking about. Us being one in soul and spirit. Remember what I talked about last week? This is what he's talking about. And you, if, if you are fragmented in that area, and part of the, the gift of tongues is to help that, because if you cannot get there, you're still too double-minded. Come on. And you can't be led of the Spirit. You can't hear what the Spirit is saying. What, we're supposed to have the mind of Christ, right? And so the mind of Christ, Jesus never did anything that he didn't hear his Father do, Right? He never said anything that his father didn't say. Well, I don't know any of us that have reached that place. Because stuff flies out of my mouth quite often, and I'm thinking, ooh. I, I quote that scripture almost daily. Put a guard over my mouth, Lord, and a watch at the door of my lips. Because we speak out of emotion a lot of times, and we speak out of our soul a lot of times without even recognizing that we're doing it. And we think it's spiritual. So, there are three kinds of tongues. The first kind is found in Acts 2. Let's go on turn there. Acts chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. Let's start with 1. Verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the first time that the Holy Spirit came into the earth. Jesus had, had died, had been crucified, had went back to the throne, and he sent the Holy Ghost. And he told them, go wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. That's what he said in Luke 24, 49. He sends them to go wait in Jerusalem. And, on, and, and he says in Acts 1, 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that you may be a witness in Jerusalem, let me read it. 
in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. And so, first of all, you're going to be a witness right here to your home. And then it goes out and it moves out. And as you grow, you, your, your, your borders expand. Amen? And so you, he said, go wait until you're endued with power. So in chapter 2, they're waiting in Jerusalem. They're all together. 120 of them are in the upper room. They're all in one accord and they're waiting. And they hear a sound from heaven and it comes like a rushing mighty wind. There's the uh, coming on the wind, the wind talkers. It came on the wind. They heard that sound, and the Holy Spirit came into the earth at that moment. And it sat upon each one of them, and it looked and it appeared like it was cloven tongues of fire, and every one of them spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This was the very first one, and this is where the tongues that, were rec- that, that are recognized by other nationalities, and they are a sign and a witness to the unbeliever. In 1 Corinthians 14, 22, that's what it says, that tongues are assigned to the unbeliever. We'll read that here in just a minute. Prophecy is, is for the believer. It's for the church. But tongues is a sign for the unbeliever. But it's this sign. It's this tongues. Does that make sense? Not for just a bunch of people to pray in their prayer language all together and it freaks somebody out. It, the sign and the wonder to the unbeliever is this one right here. It is when that unbeliever, when you're standing in a foreign country and you begin to speak in tongues when the Spirit comes over you and they hear it in their language, let me tell you something, it makes a believer out of them. It will make a believer out of any unbeliever. Especially when you're white, got blonde hair, and you're standing on an African stage, and you start praying in tongues, and they hear it. They, they know that you don't speak that language. Amen? And it makes, and it draws people, and it will turn their heart to God. That's what the gifts are for. It's to draw men into what He is. Amen? And so, in, um... In 1 Corinthians 14, 22, it does say, we'll go ahead and turn there because I'll read it to you. I want you to read it. I'm trying to break this down for you. It says, Wherefore, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serves not for them which believe, but are for them which do believe. So prophecy is for the believer and the the tongues that you speak in another, that that they hear in their language is a sign to the unbeliever. Okay, now you also have the second one is your personal prayer language and it is found in 1 Corinthians. Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2. I'm going to tell you what it's about. 1 Corinthians Chapter 14, verse 2. Okay, It is for prayer and speaking only to God, and you are speaking mysteries, and it edifies your spirit. It says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him, howbeit he speaketh mysteries. Okay? In 1 Corinthians 14, 4, it says... But he speaks in a, he that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he that prophesies edifies the church. In chapter fourteen, it is literally telling you what the difference is between tongues, your personal prayer language, and tongues and interpretation and prophecy. It's telling you what the difference is. And this is the very chapter that people will pick out and tell you tongues is not for today, or tongues is not supposed to be in the church. They'll say, oh, you're supposed to, do you understand what I'm saying? This is, the, this, is the, this is the chapter that they argue that with. But I want to tell you, this chapter explains to you the difference between your personal prayer language and prophecy. Okay? And we'll get into that in just a minute. But the third, the third um, um, kind of prayer is tongues for interpretation. And it's also found in 1 Corinthians 14. 26 through 28. It is for public use and it is equal to prophecy. And it is for the edification of the church. 
Now I'm going to take, let's go back to the personal prayer language for a minute. You're speaking mysteries and it edifies you in your spirit. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says these tongues build you up in your most, I mean, Jude 20 says this, it builds you up in your most holy faith. That's Jude 20. And in Isaiah 28, Isaiah's prophesying about tongues right here. And this is your prayer language, again, that we're talking about. Isaiah 28, verses 11 and 12 says, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith that you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. So it causes rest to the weary and refreshing in you. And it builds you up on your most holy faith. This is your prayer language. Your personal prayer language. Well, y'all are quiet. You taking notes? Okay. First Corinthians 14, let's read 26 through 28. Hold on. You just keep your finger right there. Let me keep going real quick. Because I want, I want to explain something to you. Because this is where it always gets confusing. Do you understand the three? Does everybody understand the three kinds of tongues? Before I move on. If you don't, raise your hand so I can explain it. Okay? All right, cool. Okay, now here you go. Here's the different kinds of tongues. And it, this is the public versus private tongues. Because so many times people will say, you don't need to do that in, in public, okay? And this is where it get, kind of gets sticky, okay? 1 Corinthians 12, let's read it. But yeah, turn back to 1 Corinthians 12 really quick. First Corinthians 12 talks about the gifts. Chapter 13 tells you there needs to be love that goes along with those gifts. And then 14, it starts explaining them. So you have a gift, then the fruit, and then the gift. <laughs> so it kind of explains it. Um, but so in verses, uh, this is talking about a church body. First Corinthians 12, 28 through 30. Now you are the body of Christ, in verse 27, and the members in particular. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Hmm. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues and do all interpret? But covet earnestly the best gifts... And then he goes on to say, I'll show you a more excellent way. And he, wants, he starts talking about love. Okay? But I want to explain something to you right here. Um, the public gift of tongues is for the edification of the assembly of believers. Okay? And it talks about those diversities of tongues. And in verse 30, by the time it gets down to verse 30, my notes that I have right here when I put this, when I wrote this curriculum was what I put was this is talking about the different types of ministries in a public gathering. Does that make sense? Did I lose you? Y'all looked at me like I lost you. I'm going to read it again. Okay. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then the gifts of healing and the helps of government, helps governments and diversities of tongues. I'm talking about diversities of tongues right now, not all the rest of that. Okay? And this is what I'm talking about is the diversities of tongues in a public gathering. This is how the different types of ministries in a public gathering of believers not the tongues that are a result of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is for personal communication with God. Now, when it, this is, you, let me explain, because I don't want you to get it wrong. You use your personal prayer language in these ways, okay? 
but it edifies the church as a whole. And it comes and it manifests itself in the spirit by praise, intercession, rebuke, and exhortation. Does that make sense? When you're at home, have you ever heard me? Sometimes when we just come in here and we do intercession, you'll hear my my personal prayer language. I start praying in a personal prayer language. How many of you ever done that and then you pray long enough and it shifts and it moves into something else? Amen? Y'all are looking at me like I'm crazy. Has that ever happened to you? Raise your hand if that has happened to you so I know. Okay. So I can see if you're with me. Okay? And sometimes, if you've heard me pray for certain people, when I'm up here in the pulpit and when I'm praying, you can hear my tongue change and it'll go into a warfare tongue sometimes. It's very different and it's a dialect. That's diversities of tongues. It's for public use. You understand? And sometimes when we're all praying and, and they're doing praise, okay, and all of a sudden it just erupts in tongues as, as Michelle's playing and she just starts singing in tongues, that's a form of praise. That, yes, it comes out of her personal prayer language and her time alone with him, but listen, that is for the public, that's, that's not just between her and God. That's for everybody. Does that make sense? But if you hadn't been at home praying in your personal prayer language, it's not fixing a bust out when you're behind the piano playing. Does that make sense? Okay? So I just want you to understand because I don't want you to get caught up in saying, oh my gosh, I don't know if that's my, prayer, my personal prayer language or if that's, you know, this. Because it all comes from your personal prayer language. I say that's on the bottom of the totem pole. That's where it starts. That's the first gift you get. Then it moves up as you go. Does that make sense? Is everybody understanding what I'm meaning by that? So it comes, again, with, for praise, it comes and in a public assembly during praise, manifests itself as praise, intercession, rebuke, and exhortation. Have you ever heard a tongue that just came out and that almost was rebuking? That was very forceful? Have you ever heard that? That's a rebuke. And sometimes it has to be done in the spirit. Why? To protect people. Because God's not about uncovering your mess. He's about fixing it. He's about giving you grace to fix it. But sometimes that kind of tongue, have you ever heard that kind of tongue come out and it hit you right here? You felt it right here? That's why. See, our, we're spirit, spirit to spirit. There are times, when there have been times in meetings, especially when the spirit gets to moving, and I don't know that it's happened in here a, in a long time. Um. But when the supernatural move of God begins to move, and we, it used to happen a lot, especially when we first started this church. I'd be praying over people, and I mean, like, literally, they would speak in tongues, then I would speak in tongues, and you knew that your spirits were communicating. It, it's very awesome to see it happen and the way it happens. And God will begin to orchestrate and move. It's, it's really a neat thing. But you're, because we're spirit beings. We are. And they can communicate one with the other. There are sometimes when I lay hands on people and I will begin to pray in a tongue that is very different. I call it a deliverance tongue. It's a warfare tongue. But literally, I can see what it's doing on the inside of them. Some, I, have seen, I have seen, as I started praying, literally a taproot being pulled out of somebody. It's not me. It's the Spirit of God doing it. He's speaking it. And see, what you have to understand is that your personal prayer language is the one gift that you can start and stop anytime you want to. You purpose to do it. Just like you're going to pray, you got a purpose to pray in tongues. It makes your spirit man bigger so that when you are in a public assembly and the Spirit of God comes on you, you won't resist what He's trying to do. You'll understand it and you'll let it flow. Does that make sense? Okay? And so that's where it comes from. That utterance comes out of that. And then all of a sudden, you just know what's happening. I mean, like, nobody has to explain it to you. You just kind of know it. Like, oh, I know what that was. I know what that was. I know what that did. You know? And sometimes you don't. Sometimes, you know, I, I've, I've always had the ability, and maybe that's just the part of the call on my life, I could always tell what was happening in the service, spiritually. I, I, I mean, I really don't know why. I mean, it's just God would show me. That, that made that happen. That made that happen. That, I mean, and I, so I don't know if that's just part of my call. I know other people can do that, but I don't know that everybody can. I, I mean, I feel like if you ask the Lord, he'll give it to you. I don't think he'll withhold anything that you ask him for, you know. 
And, so, and sometimes you learn those things just by being around somebody who's walked in front of you and knows how those things work. And then you're like, oh, okay, I get that. And then you know when it happens the next time what it is. And then you can be praying into that. Because corporately what starts happening is when the, when the Spirit of God, uh, when you are prayed up in your own prayer language before you ever walk in these doors. I'll say that again. <laughs> When you are prayed up in your own prayer language, in your own time with the Lord at home, and you walk through these doors, see, then you're ready to participate corporately. Then God can use you corporately. Now, you may not be in that season of your life yet. Sometimes when you got little bitty kids, it's hard to, to find time to, you know, to juggle everything. We're all in different seasons. But... I will tell you, before the Lord can start bringing a harvest in here, we've got to reach the maturity level where we understand some of this stuff. Because I will tell you, it's only the supernatural power of God that's going to break some stuff off of some folks in this season. We're entering into the next few years, guys. You better be prayed up. You better know. You better be connected and you better be in alignment. And it, it costs you, just start praying in tongues every day. Make yourself. Make yourself. And I don't know, I, I got up last night at 3.55 after I had already been awakened by about 3. And I laid there for a little while praying. And I was praying over Craig. And he was awake. I don't even, I, I, but just praying. And finally I thought, I'm just getting up. I just need to go, because I was wide awake, and I knew the Lord was wanting me to go pray. And I did not come back to bed till after 7 o'clock, right, right before, right at 7. And I basically prayed in tongues that whole time. And it's been a while since I've prayed that long in tongues. Um, just sometimes when you're under attack, you know, you'll do it. And it's fine to do it. Have you ever been doing it and thinking about something else? <laughs> I mean, your spirit is still getting, I mean, you're st it's still good to do that. But you, do you understand what I'm saying? Where I was focused and praying in the Holy Ghost and the Lord was speaking to me. It was like there was a breakthrough in it. So um, I, I just, I released that to you tonight because it was, there was refreshing in it. There was a refreshing that came for me. And a, um, it has been a while since I've done it that long and the Lord started speaking to me so that's why I know he wanted me to talk about tongues tonight because it's it's imperative that we as believers if you listen God wants to use you and if you want him to use you there's an anointing that comes this way and if you don't have this anointing strong enough to withhold the uh, stand, stand up under this anointing it's going to crush you do you understand You'll find yourself in a heap of trouble real quick. And so um, God's fixing a move, not just in this church, but he's fixing a move in his church all over. Um, and um, why? And I've told y'all this before, and I'm not prophesying gloom and doom, but there is a shaking coming, and it is for restructuring. And listen, we've got to be ready because those people are going to be distraught. And we're going to have to have the peace that passes all understanding. And if you're not prayed up and ready, and you can't speak peace to your own storm, how are you going to speak peace to somebody else's? Come on. You cannot give out what you do not have. And people are looking for peace. Lord, I could get into so much more. Lord, just help me stay focused, Lord. So those four things is what, how it manifests, the expression of the Spirit um, in a corporate setting is through praise, intercession, rebuke, and exhortation. And then the interpretation of tongues. It's the ability given by the Holy Spirit to speak in a language understood by the speaker, the meaning of the words that were previously spoken in an unknown language. It may not be word for word, but it will, it will definitely convey the meaning. Two people may have this gift or ministry, but it will operate very differently in their lives. Why is that? Can somebody tell me? Because we're different people. We have different personalities. So, you know, most of the time, 
you're going to prophesy or give a word the way you speak, according to your intellect, according to your education. According, does that make sense? It's your personality. It's because it's coming through you, okay? Um, and i got to say this. i got to back up and say this. In your personal prayer language, this is where people get hung up. They'll say, you're trying to teach somebody to, to pray in tongues. No, I'm just trying to get you to speak. <laughs> because people have the, this... Um, misconception that the Holy Spirit's going to come over you and he's going to take your tongue and wag it, and he doesn't do that. You have to speak, and it is your spirit praying. It's the Holy Ghost helping you and giving you the utterance. But it is your spirit that prays. That's why you have, that's why it's subject to you. Does that make sense? So you're in control of it. You can choose to do it or not do it, just like praying. I can choose to pray in tongues. I start it. I speak the first syllable, and he comes in because I couldn't go for three or four hours if he didn't come in and start praying through me. Do you understand? You can't make that up for that long. And so you, you, I mean, you, you determine to do it, and you can start it and stop it. And so when I start praying for people, what I tell them is you may only get one syllable, you may only hear one syllable, and you just need to speak that out because if they can ever speak it out, it's going to come out of them fluently. And so if you're ever praying for somebody, remember that. Just tell them. Whatever you're here, it may be one syllable. You just need to speak it, even if it's ba or da or whatever. Just begin to speak it, and it's going to begin to flow out of you. And I will tell you another thing that I do. Every time I sit down before the Lord, I say, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Holy Spirit, help me to worship. Help me exalt Him. Because you can do nothing on your own, I'm telling you right now. Nothing on your own. You need his help. I need his help. Okay, it can come, let me just tell you, that when you, if somebody prays in tongues, and if there is tongues and interpretation in a service, it is equal to prophecy, okay? And so usually what will happen is, you know how sometimes, which we, we do a lot of prophecy in our church. So y'all know how, the, it, like, it'll lull, like when we're doing worship. It's almost like there's a lull that comes in the, in the corporately. And, you know, they, they kind of, the worship team kind of goes down a little bit. And you, and you know somebody's got a word, you know. Sometimes that's when tongues will come. And it'll be a different, it will sound like a language when it comes out. And if it's you that has it, let me just tell you what happens. It comes on you from the outside. You feel it here, but it comes on you and you feel it here. And it bears witness. One bears witness with the other. And sometimes it will almost, almost feel like intercession. I remember the first time I ever did it, I kept thinking it was intercession. And the woman that was my spiritual mom at the time, I was in a service with her, and finally she said, Dana, that is a word in your belly. Spit it out. Because I thought I was in intercession. I was bent up over in the corner. Get, blah, you know, like, so I'm thinking I was interceding for somebody. And, she, and the Lord just spoke to her and said, that's the way. And so I stood up and tongues came out. And someone wrote, interpreted it. Okay? And so, so I, I just put that, I always, when I'm teaching this, I always put that out there. So I want you to know. And sometimes you can try to fight it. Go and try to fight it. You'll be holding on to the back of something. You'll be going, shaking. Because the power of God will come on you so strong. And you got to release it. It can come as um, an introductory phrase or sentence. And this is the biggest deal. If you're given the interpretation to that tongue, the thing is you'll sit there and argue with God and you'll say, give it to me. And he may give you one word. And you go, I can't tell you how many times I've said, give me, give me the word, Lord, and I'll go on and say it. He ain't going to give it to you because it's called faith you're going to step out in. He'll give you one word and you, or a phrase, a small phrase. And once you start speaking it, boom, it comes flowing out of you, just like the tongues, because see, it's not you. you know, it doesn't need to come through this. You don't need to reason it out what it's going to be said. He may give you one word, he may give you a small phrase, and you just need to speak that, and then, buddy, out of your belly will begin to come that prophecy or that interpretation for that tongue. And he may go on for I don't know how long. But that's how it comes. And it can also come as a sense of pressure with words or scripture. It can come as a general thought or idea. You can hear words, see words, or see a picture. Okay? 
And again, the interpretation of tongues is equal to prophecy. And so, um, one more scripture, and then I'm done. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, one more time. Close my Bible, let me open it back up. 14. 12, verses 12 and 13. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret it. Must pray for this gifting and pray in tongues to receive this gift. It's equal to prophecy, which is found in 1 Corinthians 14, 3 through 5. Therefore, it must be judged the same way. See, prophecy or a word that you're given to somebody, this is, it, it needs to be judged. It's supposed to be judged. You know, that's why we do it. That's why we call people in and uh, when we're giving a word to somebody, you always need to have somebody with you to hear that word um, so that it can be verified. I, it's my personal opinion. I know some people it doesn't bother. I don't like people that I don't know in my uh Corporate setting, pulling a member of mine off in the parking lot and giving them a quote-unquote word. I think that's out of order. I personally believe that that's out of order. You know, if you want to do it in secret, that's not God. God's not a God of secrecy. That, that's, deriv that's a derivative of the occult when things are in secret. You may not have confidence, but that's okay. You're free here. I'm going to help you cultivate the gift in you. You think you got a word for somebody and you feel like you need to give it, then you get me, you get Brother Travis, you get a, a, a Pastor Paul, you get somebody that is in leadership here and you give that word to that person. So that the, Because see, what happens is sometimes people perceive cor incorrectly. And if there is someone standing there to help judge that, they can help judge that person perceive it correctly. Does that make sense? That's what we're, the, we're supposed to do is the body. Amen? And so that's, you know, uh, we, I want you to pray for those things. Um, and I'll tell you something else. You better pray if you're going to do tongues and interpretation. <laughs> if you're going to uh, ask for that gift, you better, if you know, tongues to do corporately, you better ask for the, uh, the gift of interpretation. Because there may be somebody next to you, because I have flat out given to, uh, and, uh, tongues that was supposed to be interpreted. That I knew it wasn't my prayer language. It was an interpretation. And somebody was too scared to give the interpretation. They'll quench the spirit. Because they don't know, either they don't know or they're, they're afraid or, or whatever. So go on and pray for God to give you both if, you're going, if you want to do it that way. You know, a lot of ours just comes through prophecy. But sometimes there is tongues. We haven't done that in a while. I'm going to call that forth in the name of Jesus. so that we will begin to see how that works. So anyway, does anybody got any questions? I'm done. I want you to seek those gifts, pray for them, uh, and pray in them. Pray in, pray in tongues. It, it's important. Uh, Bill Hammond wrote a book, 70 Reasons to Pray in Tongues. It's a really good book. I've not read it, but, but part of it. I've seen some excerpts on it. I've never... I'm going to order some of those books, I believe. Um, so... Um, we can get busy with that. Listen, you can read a passage of Scripture, not understand it. Stop praying tongues for five minutes. Read it again, and you'll understand it. That was the most amazing thing to me when I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I got, I got my personal prayer language when I was in the eighth grade. All by myself, laying in a bunk bed. My mother had came back from the Holy Land, and I thought she was crazy. Because we were in a church that taught against that. And my mom had had problems. Um, she had been on antidepressants and had had problems. She gets over there, she gets totally healed because she gets, she gets baptized in the Holy Ghost, got healed, forgot to take her medicine while she's there, and then realized, oh, my God, I'm healed. I mean, and she comes back, and the woman was on fire, laid hands on everybody, got everybody baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I was the, I was the last one. Can you all believe that? Like, I should have been the first, but I, I mean, I held out. I didn't believe it. I was like, she's dead. I remember telling my dad, you might as well go and take her over to uh, Rusk. That's exactly, yeah. I said, go and take her over to Rusk because she done fell off the deep end. That's what I told my dad. And he said, Dana, 
And then he got it. And I'm like, what? Like, come on. Y'all are crazy. I mean, I'm in the eighth grade. And I had spent the night with my aunt and um, my little, my, we had watched, I don't even remember, we watched something on TV. I don't remember if it was the 700 Club or what. We had watched something. And um, yes, it was the 700 Club because my dad had prayed for a word of knowledge specifically. He said, God, if this is something you want me to do, I want a word of knowledge from Pat Robertson off of 700 Club. My dad put out the biggest fleece ever. And that night, Pat Robertson spoke about what my dad had said. And it made a believer out of me. That night, I went and got in that little bunk bed. My little cousin was on the top bunk. And I remember saying, God, this is what I did. God, if you're real, if this stuff is real, I want you to, be, I, want, I want the tongues. I want it. And I said, I've heard them all say, if I open my mouth, you'll feel it. And I went. <laughs> and nothing happened. So I prayed it all again. And I went. Laying in that bed with my mouth wide open. And if you know me, I'm not, I wasn't real patient. I'm much more patient than I used to be. And I'm like, well, I guess you just don't want me to have it. And I rolled over in my bed, pulled up the covers. And as I'm laying there, I'm like almost dozing. And I could hear these syllables coming to me. But they were coming from here. Does that make sense? I, they weren't coming from outside in like my thought process would happen. They were rising up, and I, and, the, and I was hearing these sounds. And I know it was the Holy Spirit. He said, speak that. And I spoke a syllable or two, and I'm telling you, it flowed out of me, and it did not stop for probably three days straight. And I mean, and it was a fluent language. It wasn't just ba 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 da da. You know how some people, you'll get it. I think the longer that we're indoctrinated, <laughs> the worse the block is that we have, and it can't flow, you know, real fluently. But I mean, I was still young, you know, um, and so it just flowed out of me, and it and it has always done that. But I just I want to encourage you, and I tell that because people think, you know, they're not sure how it comes or. And I always give that testimony. And, and so even tonight, I want to pray really quick. I'm going to play a blanket, blanket prayer so that it can go out over the web because I won't, listen, that can happen. My daughter got baptized in the Holy Ghost in her laundry room, hiding from her kids on a, off of a DVD from Derek Prince. <laughs> do, you, do you understand? I mean, and that's how it came with her. And so I want to pray a blanket prayer, okay, for anybody who wants to receive it. And we're going to pray with, with, with uh, we're all going to pray together. And if there's anybody in here that does not have their personal prayer language tonight, when we turn off the thing, we're going to pray for you. And if you want it, and you'll get it. It's just, it's that easy. And it's that simple. All right? So, Father God, uh, I'm just going to just say a blanket prayer, and I want you all to repeat me, just like I'm going to get you baptized in the Holy Ghost. And so, uh, this is even a teaching prayer for those that uh, are on the web that will go out. Listen, this is you. You can do this. Any one of us can do this and pray for somebody else, and they'll receive it. We're, it's not special. <laughs> you just got to have faith, okay? So, I'm going to, just like I'm going to baptize you, so I want you to repeat after me, okay? Say, Father God, baptize me in the Holy Ghost. And I will pray in tongues in Jesus' name. Now I want you to start praying in tongues. Come on. I thank you, Lord, that out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water. Keep going, guys. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That every dam that would cause it to stop, I break the power of it now in Jesus' name. And I call forth those rivers of living water out of your belly in the name of Jesus. Those of you who are out there on the web, Lord, I call that forth. I call rivers of living water out of your belly that you may begin to, to, to just uh, speak the words that, the, that are given the utterance by the Spirit of God and that you begin to flow in that in Jesus' name. We just thank you for that, Lord. We bind our minds to the mind of Christ in Jesus' name that there be no hindrance. Come on, keep going, keep going. I want to hear it, come on. Is it a charging atmosphere? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We seal it by the power of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the blood in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for that gift. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. For more information, visit us at wordaliveglobal.org or write to us at Word Alive Outreach Ministries, care of Wednesday Night Topical Bible Teachings, Post Office Box 1452, Carthage, Texas 75633.